My name is Lisa Stallinger. I'm an Austrian journalist and designer, working and living in India. I work in cultural diplomacy. So I was invited by the TEDx team to speak about culture, so I asked my DC friends what I should concentrate my talk on. So they said to me, just talk about your life. <laughs> so I will give you an insight today about my journey moving from Austria, Germany to UK and living in India. And why I think starting new can be turned into a real supercar. This was where I was starting already. So I'm from Austria, which is in Europe. It's a country with many mountains. We also have very good dishes like schnitzel, classical music from Mozart, and also we do have a lot of cows. So you might also know us from making beer, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and the film Sound of Music, or maybe just the skill, which is not good. <laughs> um, stereotypes aside, now here comes what the Austrians know about India. So there's Shah Rukh Khan. A few years ago, there was quite a big hype about Bollywood films in German television. So now we even have our very own Bollywood TV channel. Um, so just imagine watching Chota Akbar with German dubs. It's a very interesting combination. So moving on to other things in the, uh, Austrians know about India. So we all do appreciate your butter chicken. We know the touch. And we also know you for very vivid colors and brave combinations that we would never be like brave enough to put on as I am the living example today. But sometimes I try. Yeah, okay. Sometimes I try. <laughs> okay. So don't judge by stereotypes, but there can be a good starting point for your own research that you want to do. So it's like reading the first line of a Wikipedia article before you get really deep into your research. And we all do that. I think that's very international. So see, for example, we do wear our traditional Austrian dress. This is me in the Dirndl in front of the embassy, but it's not a regular thing. It's not as usual as you wearing the Indian attire here. <laughs> So in order to get your own picture, I will show you some impressions about Austria. So this is my hometown by night, overviewed by the Danube. This is where my family is from, it's a lake in Upper Austria. And the current state of Austria, quite dramatic. So this was sent to me four days ago by my Austrian aunt. The good thing about our times is that we can keep in touch. We can get updates, we can get information online. And not only information, when I was living in the UK, my mother called me and she was asking me about my front door, the neighbors, pot plants. I was very confused. I was saying, Mama, what, what are you doing? What are you on about? What are these old questions? She said, Lisa, I just discovered Google Street View and it's actually working in your neighborhood. So I'm right now running around in front of your house. And technology can be scary sometimes also. I went to London to do my master's in communication design. And I did know London. I went there for as a tourist. I experienced Oxford Street. I've seen the city. But what did I expect moving there? So I thought it's quite close to Austria. They speak English. I will be fine. I packed my suitcase. I flew there in one and a half hours. And when I arrived, I went off the plane. And the first thing where I failed terribly was crossing the street, so I was not fine. The driving was not only on the wrong side of the street, as we drive on the right in Austria, but the, the way was really different. In the busy London traffic, nobody could make time to let me pass, as they do in Austria. So I was standing there with my suitcase, knowing I will start from square one. Maybe it will be very different than what I expected, and a lot is about the expectations you have moving countries. The culture shocks appear in places and situations where you would have never thought of that they could happen. Maybe you all know how to cross a busy street. I'm sure you do. But it can be an ATM that is working differently, 
or the university journal opening up when you're already very late for your very first class. So a bit late I got more settled. I went out the first time with my new British friends. I was very excited. Imagine me with my cider and my fish and chips. So my British friends were starting to chat and catch up. And I could not understand one thing. I mean, I can speak English as you can hear, but I could not understand the meaning. They were speaking in phrases. They were saying things like, Arsenal is the bee's knee right now, but Chelsea is full of beans. And I was very confused. I mean, the bee's knee? I was very confused. So I went home and studied phrases, British phrases and sayings, in order to understand my friends. So it took me time, but I figured it out. Another aspect is that you talk on the phone with your friends from home. And they are excited and they think you're fluent in two languages. But the thing is, it's a very common misassumption. Because what really happens is, you're suddenly confused in two languages. And I'm sure a lot of you do know this situation also. So when I was speaking in my mother tongue German with my friends at home, I couldn't finish the sentences in German because I was missing out the words in my head. Fast forward, after my graduation, I got a job offer from Delhi. I moved to India and expected everything to be very different to save me from another massive pressure shock. <coughs> Bringing yourself into new situations that is definitely out of your comfort zone, but we are doing it every day. And I'm not only speaking about moving countries, you can be also in a very new situation in another part of town. For me, it's old Delhi, for example. So, you can be lost, but there's a lot of fear and discomfort with it that comes. But I can tell you one thing, there's a big reward. We can grow with it. We can grow as persons. Dake, age, chite. <laughs> so this is, I also got this quote from a friend of mine. So that's the next point for me, and what do we need to get there? We need people who help us out. Gladly I always had kind people who were helping me with finding my way and who made the time to explain things to me. The greatest thing is you can not only grow but you have the superpower to make somebody else grow. And this is what I strongly believe in. You need kind people who help you across the street and believe me I have been there but also you can be the one who's making the time to help somebody who is very lost. So no matter what, no matter what, in everything that I do, the people are my main concern. In journalism, I want to educate my readers in an entertaining way. And in design, I want to make the content accessible for all the people, no matter which educational background or status they have. So when I came to India, I realized it is especially tricky to speak to the Indian audience as you are so diverse, there are so many languages, there are so many cultural backgrounds, religions, and ideas, unity and diversity. So how is it possible to speak with, uh, if you don't even speak the same language? No matter where you come from or who you believe in, we all should have each other. So kindness is the key, and we can speak it all. So what I really want to point out to you today is from everybody that you interact with, you can learn something. Everybody has skills that you don't have. And this could be very useful for your current self. And it all comes down to one thing, respect. Respect for yourself and for each other. Treat people the way how you want to be treated. This is what I strongly believe in. And I think that this is the way how we can grow every day, learn every day, and get kinder human beings every day. And I think that's the main aim of each and every one of us. And I wish you, the audience, that you go home today after the talks as an improved version of yourself. Thank you very much.